my most embarrassing experience here in Sweden. What is Sweden's ugliest dialect? I feel like I've been set up here and there is one that as soon as I read this question, it just made my heart shudder and I knew I had to share. Hey guys, welcome back. It's that time again for another video and today we're doing one that I feel like we've been working up to for quite a while now. Yep, since I first started posting a couple of months back, loads of you guys have been joining me all over my various social media channels and asking me all sorts of questions about my honest impressions and experiences here in Sweden. So I decided it was high time to give you guys the answers that you want and recently I jumped over onto my Instagram account and I asked you guys to send in your questions for this video. Lots of you came through. Today I'm gonna be answering those questions, no holds barred. Let's see where this goes. I'm a little bit scared. Okay, so let's dig into some of your questions about my experiences and my time here in Sweden. And to kick us off today, we've got a great question coming in from Emily Atkinson, 1997, who asks me, how do you and how And for those of you that don't speak Swedish, what that basically means is she's asking me, have I got many Swedish friends or has it been difficult to meet people? Okay, that's a good question to start us off with and definitely a valid one. I know it's something that lots of people say when they first move to Sweden, it's really, really difficult to make new friends, specifically Swedish ones. It's a lot easier to meet people that are also coming from abroad and also looking to make a new life here. And so I can definitely say that when I first moved here, in my first few months, I definitely found it easier to meet other people that had also moved here, that were moving here for study or were moving here to work. Whereas meeting Swedish people, didn't prove so easy. And I wouldn't say it wasn't through lack of trying because I definitely put myself out there and tried a lot of new hobbies like orienteering that I'd never really done before just to try and meet people in the kind of groups that they were meeting in. But then after a while, some of my colleagues back at work started to become friends. And then from there, it kind of branched out even wider. So I can definitely relate to the problem when you first come here, especially if you've come during the pandemic, it must be so difficult to meet people when we can't really go anywhere. But I think it's one of those things, it's about perseverance. And I guess wherever you move in the world, it's gonna be really difficult to make friends when you're an adult, how do you really make those groups unless you're in, you know, the capital city or something? And for those of us like me that aren't, it can be a bit of a struggle, but persevere with it and I reckon you'll get there eventually. That was my experience at least. And now I've got lots of different Swedish friends who I like to hang out with and I would count as friends. And yeah, I think it's really worked out, but it takes its time. I should also mention that my girlfriend is Swedish, so I had a little bit of an advantage on that account. But when I first moved here, I did choose to live on my own to try and make my own friends, to really put myself out there so that I didn't just fall back on her and her friends so I do relate and I would say you know just look for a board game society if nothing else Swedes love playing board games it's a great way to meet people and you're stuck there for hours while you're playing fantasy games so you'll be fine and my second question today comes from Gabs Bielder who asks me why did I move to the central part of Sweden instead of Stockholm or Gothenburg and I know they're not the only person that's wondering this I see comments on all of my videos asking if I'm living in Malmö in Stockholm or in Gothenburg I can confirm once and for all I live in none of those three instead I live in Östergötland and the reason for that is because that's where my girlfriend is based. And when I moved from the UK, I of course wanted to move to be closer to her and it didn't really make a lot of sense to go to Stockholm or Gothenburg, for example, because then I was still gonna be two, three, four hours away. And then I might as well just stay in London. So yes, that's why I ended up in Östergötland. And to be honest, I'm not upset about it at all. I think living in a smaller Swedish city really gives me a better opportunity to learn the culture and experience the society here. I see some of the comments on my videos. I know, for example, that you guys have said that Stockholm is not a fair representation of the whole country. So living here gives me a bit of an advantage because I really get to immerse myself and experience Sweden the way that you guys do. And talking of experience in Sweden, my next question from Oscar really picks up on some of those trends. He asks me, what is Sweden's ugliest dialect in my opinion? Well, thanks Oscar, you've really put me in deep water here trying to find an answer to this question that is gonna offend as few people as possible. <laughs> and as a bit of a disclaimer before I answer, I have to say that of course, I haven't experienced the whole of Sweden. I've only been to certain regions. So I'm sure there's lots of different dialects, good and bad that I've not experienced yet. So this is going to be based on just my impression so far from visiting different parts of Sweden, watching Swedish TV, speaking to different Swedish people. And before I answer this, I've got to say sorry to my friends down in Skåne because I'm going to be choosing Skånska. And I'm sure you've got a really lovely dialect, but the reason I have to choose it for this question is because it's the one that I find really difficult to understand. And because of that, it's really difficult to get on board with. So yeah, no offense intended, but my choice has to be Skånska. And the reason for that is because when I hear someone from Skåne talking on TV, I find it really difficult to follow. It's really 
really difficult for me to even just, you know, track the words they're saying or listen to the gaps between the words. So I really can't choose anyone else. And I feel like I've been set up here because Oscar also asked me to imitate the accent in a video. He didn't specify this one. So if you guys would like to see me trying to imitate Skonska, I'm sure it'll be hilarious. Let me know in the comments below and maybe that will be my next video. My next question comes from VNDR who asks me, what is my favorite place here in Sweden? And I've got to say, if you follow me over on Instagram and you've done so for a while, you probably have a pretty good idea what I'm gonna say here, but my answer has to be the Gothenburg Archipelago. Specifically the islands down in the south side of the archipelago, I really enjoy visiting them. It's one of my favorite things to do here in Sweden. And I found that whatever the season is just so relaxing to be out there. Some of them are just nature reserves. Some of them have little hotels where you can stay overnight. Some of them just have summer houses. It's beautiful and each one has its own little character. And that brings me along nicely to my next question of the day, which comes from Eugenie, who asks me if I struggle with cultural differences here and if I do, how do I cope with them? And I've got to admit that's a really, really good question because lots of you guys have probably seen my cultural differences video. If you haven't, I really, really recommend that one. Uh, but of course I've talked about lots of cultural differences that I've seen. But as she says, do I actually struggle with those or do they not cause me a problem? I think I'd be lying if I didn't say I've struggled with some of them in the past and some of them I definitely continue to do so now. And I hope that I've given you the impression so far from this channel that I like experiencing new cultures. I like taking on new traditions, but it can be a lot sometimes, particularly when you move to a new country and it's a lot to acclimatize with in one go. Now there's some things like fika, experiencing the nature, work-life balance, which I've really got on board with very, very quickly. But then there's other things that have caused me a bit more of a problem. So I definitely say I've struggled with that in the past. I'm actually planning a whole other video very, very shortly where I talk through some of those struggles in more detail. But to answer your other question about how I cope with it, I think that's a really, really good point. And I think one of the things I recommend to people is to try and blend your old culture and your new one. And what I mean by that is, of course, when you come to a new country, jump in at the deep end, try something new, get on board with the new culture, really immerse yourself in that. But that doesn't mean that you have to forget everything from your home country. So try and find a nice blend. Look at the things that are important to you in your old country and really bring them into your new way of life in your new country. And I see this as a real opportunity, actually. If you're someone like me who is lucky enough to have an international partner, mine, of course, is Swedish, it's really, really fun because we can kind of blend our cultures and find the things that work for both of us. So she teaches me things, I teach her things, we find what works for us and we bring them together into a really nice blend. Who says you have to be one or the other? And today's next question comes to us from Enrico who asks me, Elska du Hualot Pirelli? Which means, do I love Hualot Pirelli? For those of you that don't know, as I myself didn't until recently, Hualot Pirelli was a Eurovision act who was sent from Sweden. She is now an international household name. She is a singer, she's a schlager diva. People love her, Enrico is one of them. And I guess the only right answer to this, of course, is yes, of course I love her. We can ignore the fact that I don't know any of her songs and can't sing along to any of the lyrics, right? Because this is all a new education to me. I didn't really know who Hualotta Pirelli was till recently, but as I say, she's clearly made an impact on lots of people. So how can I say I don't love her? Please don't come for me Eurovision stand. Which brings me on to my next question from Motalia, who asks me about my most embarrassing experience here in Sweden. And there is one that as soon as I read this question, it just made my heart shudder and I knew I had to share for this answer. Picture the scene about four years ago, almost to the day I came to visit Sweden for the very first time in my life to visit my girlfriend out here for the summer. And you know, she took me to Liseberry, which is one of the biggest theme parks here in Sweden over in Gothenburg. Sounds like a good day, right? Well, it was for a while. So it got to about 4.30 and we'd been riding since nine in the morning, having the absolute best time, just, you know, absolutely enjoying ourselves. And then we decided to go on one of our final rides of the day. And the ride that we chose was this one that we've been looking at all day and it looks super, super fun, where basically every single person has their own plane and you get inside the plane and then it takes you up into the air and you're, you know, maybe 50, 60 meters up. And then basically the whole ride goes round and round and round. And then in each of your planes, you're trying to flip yourself so you can kind of steer so that your plane goes round and round and round. And the way that this ride was built meant the planes were in groups of two. And I wasn't in the same group of two as my girlfriend. She was on the plane behind me. So I couldn't see her. We couldn't talk to each other. And when we broke down, it got frightening. So I'm sat on this ride, 60 meters up in the air. I don't speak any Swedish. I can basically say, hey, hey, and tack, and that is it. And then they come over the speakers to tell us what's gone wrong. So the guy comes on the tannoy and mutters something away in Swedish, which of course I understand nothing of at all. But you know, I'm not worried. I'm thinking they'll sort this out. It's just a small technical fault. We'll be back on the ground in no time. So I'm super calm until the girl in the plane next to me 
starts screaming. After what feels like an eternity, but was probably only about five minutes, the ride drops out of the sky about 10 meters and then fastens, and then another about 30 meters, so we're nearly back on the ground by this point. But all the way down, I'm thinking, Jesus, I'm about to die. When we eventually got back down to ground level, safely enough to tell the tale, I ran around to my girlfriend. I was feeling absolutely terrified. We hugged it out. I've never felt so embarrassed because she was so relaxed about the whole thing because she'd understood what was gonna happen. Me, on the other hand, no idea. I hope I don't need to tell you that after about 10 minutes we got over it and jumped back on another ride. That wasn't going to put us off, but I'm surprised I've ever been to a Swedish theme park again after that experience. Well, that's all we've got time for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the answers to those questions. If you asked a question and I didn't get around to it yet, I'm super, super sorry, but I will store them in the bank. And if you guys liked this video, perhaps I can do another honest Q&A very, very soon. Let me know in the comments below and drop me a like so I know that this is the type of video you'd like to see again soon. And while you're there, why not subscribe if you haven't already? That would be awesome. And make sure you turn on that notification so you're the first person to know as soon as there's a new video right here on this channel. Uh, thank you so much for watching another video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I'll be back soon and I hope whatever you're doing next, you have an awesome rest of your day. Take care guys.